In Europe of the Middle Ages, brewing was considered a domestic chore. The women of the household were charged with making the beer, but important factors for making it, like sanitation, and even the quality of the ingredients, were still poorly understood. The result was a god-awful mess. Ale that had God knows what in it. Ale that was often spoiled and could potentially make people very, very sick. And it often did. But at least they took pride in their work. Monasteries would change everything. Abbeys and monasteries were brewing ale throughout Europe in the 8th and even as early as the 5th century. They brewed for a variety of reasons. They used it to barter for other items they needed, they sold it to the community, they used it to pay their taxes, and in short, their ale was arguably one of their most important products. And they also drank it themselves. And they drank a lot of it, all the bloody time. At the Council of Aix-la-Chapelle in 809 AD, clergy were allowed to drink four liters of ale per day. Most monasteries recorded similar rations. The monks were master brewers. The list of contributions they made is almost endless. Because they had the time, they approached brewing as they did other subjects of study, with patience and diligence. They created quality controls for ingredients, and they recorded their recipes, two very important additions to brewing that significantly improved the ale made during that time. They also understood and passed on the importance of washing and cleaning their brewing equipment. They didn't understand the biology or chemistry involved, but they began to understand what made beer spoil and sour. And again, the quality of their product drastically improved. Another important, if not the most important contribution, was an ingredient they added sometime in the 9th century. Hops. Their recipes were closely guarded secrets, but... In 822, an abbot recorded his use of hops in brewing, transforming the ale into beer. Hops increases the shelf life of beer. It protects it from spoiling, and it balances the sweetness of the drink. It would take another 500 years for hopped beer to catch on, but it's never looked back. The rise of abbey and monastic brewing reached its pinnacle in the 13th century, when almost every monastery in Europe had a brew house constructed in it. Of course, seeing the potential for revenue, local lords and governing bodies began taxing the production and sale of beer, which led to an immediate and drastic decline in the number of monastic breweries. The upside was that beer finally entered a commercial production phase, and it's one that's improved and grown. So, when next you lift a beer to your lips, lift it higher. Toast the legions of monks, the countless abbeys, the numerous monasteries that spent centuries in pursuit of quality and flavor. Thank you, monks, for my beer. Even the sh stuff.